Today's session is going to be focusing on managing your materials cost and expenses in Noify. And I'll go ahead and get started here with a brief introduction. So for those that don't know me, my name is Vincent and I work here with the product team at Noify. And I'm excited to kick off this new webinar series to show you some of the options Noify offers for tracking your material and subcontractor costs on your projects. And I thank you all for taking the time uh, to join me today for this webinar. Today's session, more specifically, we're going to cover purchase orders and expenses in Noify, how to manage them and job cost them effectively. We're also going to walk through vendor invoices, so being able to expense those open purchase orders and um, making sure that our vendor invoices sync directly to QuickBooks uh, in cases where any of you are connecting your Noify account with a QuickBooks account. We'll also walk through the subcontractor costing. So you can see uh, a couple of different ways that Noify manages cost for your subcontractors. And lastly, I'll touch on how to allocate cost from your catalog. So more specifically, this would be uh, cases where you want to keep track of costs on a project for materials that aren't necessarily part of a purchase, but they're going to factor into the cost of a job. Uh, Noify has some shortcuts there uh, so that we can bring us up to speed on your, your job tracking and be able to ultimately manage all different types of costs on your project. After we go through this, I'll leave some time for open Q&A. So we'll be able to uh, answer any questions that you have, hopefully get through as many as possible here today. Um, the questions will be addressed at the end, but as I'm going through, if you like to use the chat or the Q&A fields in the Zoom window, you can submit your questions, questions and we'll go ahead and um, follow up at the end of the session to uh, go over them as best we can. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead here now and get started with the, uh, the demonstration. So um, here in, in my screen, I'm going to start off in the purchases section. And like I mentioned earlier, each webinar is gonna cover a different topic. So I'm gonna kind of skip up to the part of managing your, your cost and your purchases here. Uh, whereas the other topics will cover more uh, you know, in depth about the topic at hand that day, whether it's uh, tracking labor or smartphone or creating jobs and things like that. So uh, here, we're going to start off in the purchases section of your account and under the manage active purchases screen, just to give you an idea of what the uh, quote unquote dashboard for purchases looks like and what information we can gather here. So our active purchases, where you see uh, everything here that shows active, this is uh, purchases that I create where I'm logging that the vendor or subcontractor is going to invoice me at a later date. So technically all of these purchases here are still open with the balance because I have not been uh, invoiced by my vendor or subcontractor, but I'm able to create these purchase orders so that Noify can help us manage the committed cost on the job. So all of these uh, purchases here will still factor into the cost of my project because we're telling Noify that uh, this is a committed cost that at some point we're getting an invoice for and we want to factor into the cost of the job. But at least for now, we can flag them as open so I can keep track of which ones I've expensed uh, and which purchases I'm going to need to um, actually create an invoice for to, to close out. If I scroll down a little bit further here, I have the company purchases section. And this is going to show me any purchase that was logged by another employee in my company. So um, I'll be able to review purchases that were submitted from other employees. And if I'm an administrator and I'm a manager for any of these employees, uh, I'll actually be able to come in here and approve purchases as well. So uh, an ideal flow is the employee from the smartphone application. They're able to log their uh, purchases from the field and keep track of what they used um, out in, on the job site over a given day. And uh, we can set up an approval authority amount and a manager so that if they do exceed that, uh, that approval, um, we'll automatically have to come in here and approve these purchases in order for them to be job costed. So you can see here by example that I do have a couple of these purchases that are pending because um, I'm the manager for these employees and they uh, exceeded their threshold here. So I need to approve these purchases before I can uh, 
uh, go ahead and job cost them. My employee can include a picture of the receipt and any kind of relevant information, as well as choosing the vendor and job so that everything is automated through our smartphone application. And once I approve this, my jobs cost will automatically reflect uh, those purchases from the field. Now we'll come back here in a little bit to go over um, kind of creating a bill for these purchases. I just want to start us off here. Um, you can create a purchase from scratch at any point. So this is again under the purchases section. I can click add new purchase up here. Uh, but I like to show this process from the job because we can actually initiate purchases from the job level. And this way everything is driven through the project so that I, I automatically job cost my expenses to the correct job and the correct phase of work and ultimately just helps automate that process going forward as for, from a job costing standpoint. So from here, I'll pop over into our contract job section. I'll open up one of my projects. And whenever we're dealing with our cost on the project, whether it's labor or expenses, I wanna go into this plan and track section here. So my plan and track, it shows me how much the job is costing me at this point. And I can do this by setting up a budget uh, from the beginning of the job so that as I'm going through and tracking my cost, I can see exactly where I stand on each uh, project at any given time. And I can see my cost to date against my budgeted value here. And I even have it separated by materials. And I can also break this out for different job phases. So we can keep track of the different phases or tasks of work here. And I can see exactly how much cost I've accumulated against what my initial budget was to help me plan for future projects as well. So I'm gonna focus on these two phases below down here that I created specifically for today. Uh, you can see that I have a budgeted list of materials here and I can do this by choosing items that are set up in my account or I can create new items on the go. And here I'll wind up estimating each material and the amount of each that I'm planning on using for this project. Now, as I go through and keep track of my cost, I'll see that cost to date number show up on the left here of my budget on the right. It also fills up this progress bar. So at a glance, I can see how close I am to hitting my budget. And also get the breakdown with the quantity of items. So I can see based on my budgeted list here, which items I've wound up ordering so far, which ones still need to be ordered. Um, I can also see which purchase order number and or which bill uh, is including these items here. So I can uh, easily navigate back and forth between my purchases and my budget here. And uh, I can also keep track of items that were received. So at a glance, you can see that we get this whole list, very beneficial for tracking an item basis, where I can see a list of all my items here. I can see exactly how much I budgeted, how much was approved to be ordered, how much we actually wound up ordering on the purchase order. I can also keep track of partial shipments here, so I can see how many I received. I can also have any of my office managers come in here and mark off if we didn't receive the full amount, so I can easily see at a glance uh, which items I'm still waiting on, which may be back ordered. And then under paid, I'll see a list and the quantity of items that were actually added to an invoice. So this just helps me, um, you know, from a high level view, be able to see where I'm at with my budget and all the items that I'm planning on using, purchasing and paying for on this particular phase of work. Now, whether I budget my items or not, I can actually create a purchase order directly from this job at any time by clicking this purchase button here at the bottom left. This is located under one of your phases under the materials header. And in the cases where I actually did budget my list of items here, you can see that I can check off one or more items at a time so that uh, I can add these to a purchase order and I can create this uh, with a click of one button here. This will bring in the quantities that I budgeted, but obviously things don't always go according to my initial estimate. If I wind up needing more or less of an item, I can always make any changes here or on the purchase order itself. So now I'll go ahead and click the start PO process here. And this will take me from the job. You'll notice it brings me from my contract job section directly into my purchases. Um, and at this point, I can start building my purchase by selecting our purchase type. So a couple of different options here that Noify offers. Uh, the purchase order option, which is the default unless you change this, 
This is telling Noify that this is an open purchase order that we're committing to paying the cost for, but it's going to stay open until my vendor actually sends me an invoice for these materials. Um, so you can choose this option here, and like we were looking at earlier, it'll keep it as an active purchase in my account, and I won't be able to close it or sync it to QuickBooks until I get that invoice from my vendor and log that here in the bill section of Noify, which we'll get to next. Some of the other options I have here is to choose the expense option. And this is if we're paying up front with a cash or a card, where I'm not waiting for an, an invoice from my vendor. We're paying for it up front, especially if one of my employees in the field, uh, he goes to Home Depot to pick up parts, he would choose one of these two, so that as soon as I submit and finalize this purchase, it's automatically going to be closed and synced to QuickBooks since we're telling Noify again that it's being paid for right on the spot. And lastly, I can choose the reimbursement option and more times than not, our employees will choose this because um, the difference here is instead of choosing a vendor for the items, I'll have a choice in my list of employees here. So we'll wanna log this reimbursement whenever we're creating a purchase that uh, my employee paid for with his or her own money. Um, and I'm going to reimburse them instead of paying a vendor. So just to keep things consistent here, I'll choose the purchase order option that the vendor will send me an invoice for. And I'll go ahead here and choose from my list of vendors. Now the benefit of doing it from the job level is you can see that now that I've selected my purchase type and vendor, Noify automatically brings in that full list of items that I checked off. I get the updated quantities that I budgeted or um, you know, updated when I was ordering. And most importantly, everything is pointed to the correct job and phase automatically. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can always come to the purchases section and build a purchase from scratch. Uh, but in doing that, you'll have to select the job and phase for each line, where when I do it from the job, this process is all automated for me. So at this point, I can just review this, uh, give it a good look-see here, and just make sure that the quantities and pricing is adding up. Uh, again, this is what I budgeted. So if I need to make changes, maybe we're using a different vendor and the prices are gonna be updated accordingly here. Uh, at this point, I want to reference my budget, but I wanna make sure that I'm putting in what I'm actually paying for the materials so that we can give you the most accurate job cost and data for your materials. Uh, at the bottom, I'll have some optional information that I can enter here, such as uh, putting in a purchase order number. We can select a purchase date, and I can also upload supporting documents. So if I have a receipt for this purchase or uh, any kind of relevant detail, it's essentially gonna be cloud storage for you at this purchase level. I can also leave notes here, so just a way to communicate internally with the rest of my team. Um, so this way, I, anything I put in here as a note, it will not only show who uh, submitted the note, but also it'll say what time it was, and my employees and other users can also come in here uh, and submit notes of themselves so that we can keep track of who's doing what and when. So now that I got my purchase created here, you'll see that it remains open because we're waiting for that invoice. Uh, and at this point, my jobs cost is automatically gonna update to reflect this total purchase order amount. This is now a committed cost that we're telling Noify we're going to be paying at some point. Uh, so we want to include this as part of the jobs cost. I can go one step further here. I have some customization options where I can create a purchase order document and actually have the option to email this to my vendor. So uh, you can see here that Noify automatically creates a purchase order document for every purchase you create in the system. And you'll have some options here on the right-hand side to actually edit and add additional information. So um, I can kind of customize a little bit here based on what I want the ship to, bill to address to look like. Uh, if there's any additional notes here, I can also choose to hide or show prices. So if I wanted to generate a copy of this uh, for one of my employees to take to the, to the actual supplier and I don't want him to see the prices. You know, I have the option of generating as many iterations of this purchase order document as I need to. As you can see then, you uh, have the option to either email this directly to the vendor through Noify, or you can always download it as a PDF document so that you have it on file here where you can save it. You can attach it to an email outside of Noify. You can store it um, at the job level. I mean, it's essentially a document that 
uh, you can download and keep track of as you see fit. Uh, so now that I have my purchase order, let's just say I do get an invoice from my vendor. Uh, I have a couple of different ways that I can create my bill. You know, I can always go to the bill section here and log a new one and choose my vendor or PO number. Or I can automate this process and in my little drop down menu here next to the email, I actually have the option to create a bill for this PO directly. So what this does is you'll see it brings me into the bill section and Notify automates this process for me by automatically entering that PO number, bringing in that relevant information. And now I have a full list of my items that were on that PO and their cost. So at this point, this is the equivalent of you entering that invoice that you received from your vendor. So the prices and quantities here should match what your vendor is sending you and ultimately billing you for. I can make any changes here. I can also leave items off. And if I do make changes, like let's just say we're only being billed for part of the amounts here, and I leave one or more items off, the next time I create a bill and enter this PO number, know if I will bring in anything that was not already on this initial bill. Another option you have for logging the bill is instead of coming in here and processing by PO number, I can actually come in to create a new bill and instead choose to search by my vendor here. And the benefit of doing this is Noify is going to automatically show you all of the open purchase orders that have not already been expensed on a previous bill. So um, this will indicate you know, which PO number it was on, which job it was for, uh, and which phase. And now I can come in and it lets me uh, see as a reminder of which POs are still open that I need to, to be expensed here. I can also add multiple uh, items here, whether it's from a PO and or from multiple POs. Uh, this way I can build my vendor invoice. And this is part of what syncs directly to QuickBooks. Uh, so we'll be able to match up this bill in Noify um, to our vendor's invoice and sync it to QuickBooks to keep track of payment and ultimately keep track of my expenses on the QuickBooks side. And you'll see that this syncs directly to QuickBooks now. So now that the bill is logged, I can go back into the purchase order and I'll see my PO is now closed. And now my bill stays open until I mark it as paid. I can mark this uh, bill as paid right here in Noify where I can click record payment, whether it's a partial amount or the, uh, the full amount, I can just come in here, enter what I'm, uh, what I'm paying my vendor, you know, any kind of details about this. And I can sync this to QuickBooks if I wanted to. The other option is this bill syncs directly to QuickBooks. So you can also process the payment on the QuickBooks side. And uh, whether you uh, log the payment in Noify or QuickBooks, it's part of the bi-directional sync. So that payment's gonna go in both directions. So uh, now if I go back to the job level, I'll start having some more costs there and I'll have some more progress uh, showing me how close I am to hitting my budget based on what I just ordered. So you can see here, I, I now have my cost has gone up a bit. My progress bar is a little bit closer now to, to getting to my, uh, my full budget. Uh, and I can come in here and repeat this process as many times as I need to. Uh, you'll see the list just gets a little bit shorter as we continue to knock off more items from our budget. So we'll move to the next step, which is the subcontractor management here. And uh, another neat trick that we can actually add subcontractors to any of our phases here of work so it can factor into our budget. Um, in this case, I already started the process here where I budgeted uh, $7,500 worth of subcontractor cost. And what happens is once I choose which subcontractor is going to be performing this work, Noify is automatically going to create a purchase order, uh, also known as a work order here in the system, uh, so that I can keep track of the total amount that we're supposed to pay them across the job. I can keep track of how much I have paid them up until a certain point. I can keep track of what the remaining amount that I'm due to still pay them. And I can also create a work order document that I can actually send to my subcontractor or just download internally for the relevant information that I need to keep track of.
And just like before, you can see that I can actually navigate directly to any of my items right here from the job. So I can click where it says view PO next to my subcontractor. And Noify is gonna bring me from the job into our purchases section and bring me right into our, our subcontractor purchase order here. You'll see it's a very similar setup to the material POs. The difference is we understand that with subcontractor purchase orders, uh, we may not be expensing the full amount of the PO on each invoice. Like for example, we may be paying our subcontractor progressively uh, where we expense them for maybe 25% at a time of the total uh, contract amount or uh, you know 50% or however they, they invoice us, whatever our agreement with them is. So um, the way this works is once I log a bill against this subcontractor purchase order, I can change whatever amount I'm billing for. And what Noify will do is it'll take the amount that you entered on the bill and it'll just subtract it from the remaining balance of the contract. So I uh, definitely get into that and show you an example. First, I just wanna show you the difference here with um, the document for the subcontractor. Uh, you'll notice again, very similar here to the material purchase order where I can kind of customize with the relevant information. I can also email this directly to my sub right here from the system. The document itself is a little bit different and I do want to note that we can customize the documents for you. So whether you have, you know, boilerplate terms and conditions that you want added onto all of your subcontractor documents, uh, or if you need changes made to kind of differentiate between those material purchases and uh, between those subcontractor purchase orders. Um, that's something that, you know, we can customize on our side so that you can generate these documents with the information that you need. You can see here that by default, it's just going to bring in uh, the work that I entered in here for my job phase. So we can, you know, easily show them the price that we're going to pay them, the work they're going to be performing. They see the exact job site address here their uh, corresponding purchase order number. Um, and I can also put in any kind of notes or um, special instructions here. So in this case, I'm letting my sub know that I'm gonna buy the materials for their work or just hiring them to come and actually perform the service. Now getting back to the process with bills, again, it's very similar. So I'll actually come in here and use my tool to create a bill for this purchase order. And let's just say I'm gonna start paying my sub for his beginning of doing the work or if he requires like a down payment to get started. Um, by default, what Noify does is we pull in that purchase order and whatever the balance is. Right now, it's we haven't billed for it yet, so it's still the full 7,500. Uh, but let's just say he's invoicing me for the uh, initial 2500 on this uh, particular contract. I can come in here and actually change this from 7500 to 2500 And what's going to happen is Noify is going to now show $2,500 as the cost against our initial estimate of 7500 And we're also going to deduct 2500 from the balance of that contract. So the next time I go through this process and I create an invoice, uh, for my subcontractor, I'll automatically see that this number will be updated to 5,000. So I never have to worry about double billing and Noify is always helping me keep track of what the remaining balance is. And again, all bills, including the ones for subs, will sync directly to QuickBooks if you're using them uh, so that this hits the correct expense account and I can keep track of the payments. Now, uh, I'd like to show you how this looks at the job level. You'll see that uh, we'll start to show some progress as far as cost for my subcontractor on the job. Uh, this number will go up. This is, again, the top of the screen here shows me my total for the project as a whole. So I can zero in on a particular phase to see my cost and budget, but uh, at the top here, this will actually show me the entire project consisting of all phases you know, how much I budgeted, how much I've costed so far, you know, exactly where I stand in real time on this project. So if I uh, pop back into my phase here for my subcontractor, you can see that uh, I see, see some progress updating now because I have the 2,500 that I put on the bill against that initial estimate of the 75. 
Let me give you a little chart here as well. So I can just see at a glance as I continue to log more invoices for the sub and they get, um, you know, collect more payment. I can see the total contract amount here. I can see what's been billed to date in total on all of those bills. And I can also see what's been paid against those. So I can see all three of the financials when it comes to this, all in one place in Noify. Uh, the last part I wanna to touch on with the subcontractors is change orders. So uh, if any point you need to change the contract value, whether it's going to increase or decrease from the 7,500, down here at the bottom left, you'll have a little drop down that gives you the ability to add a change order. And what this will do is instead of creating a new purchase order or have us start from scratch, I just enter whatever the change order value is going to be. I'll say that you know it's going to increase 2,500 um, because this change order indicates that they need more materials. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna take that original purchase order and it's gonna increase the total contract amount to 10,000. So that's what Noify is telling us here that you know it's not going to make us uh, you know, it's not going to be difficult for us to find. We go back to that same purchase order and we're just increasing it by this change order amount. And I also get a little log here that shows the change order amount and any kind of detail I put in so I can see exactly when it was approved and how much it either increased or decreased that contract amount. Uh, last part here that I wanted to cover uh, is the allocation from the catalog. So allocating from the catalog, this is anytime you want to keep track of a cost in Noify that isn't necessarily going to be on a purchase or an invoice. Let's just say some common examples are um, cases where you're, you have parts in stock, whether it's on a truck or in a warehouse, um, items that were on previous purchases, uh, where it's definitely going to factor into the cost of the job, but we're not going to actually create a new purchase or bill or anything for it. Uh, how do we get those costs to show up on this project? The way to do this is I can allocate items directly here from my catalog. And once I click this here, it's going to allow me to search through my catalog. So I have my list of items here. And if I have a specific item in mind, I can always go ahead and choose that item, update the quantity and the price, and that will automatically um, you know, send this to the project and increase my material cost accordingly. Uh, in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take these two items here because uh, my work order states that I'm going to supply my subcontractor uh, with the materials they need to perform the work and my contract with them is strictly for them to perform the service. And let's just say in this example, the materials are things that I've already purchased and I now just want to allocate from my stock so that they can use it. I'll come over here to the not ordered and this will show me my list, kind of like uh, before when we were kind of building our purchase order from our budget. I can take these budgeted items here and instead of creating a purchase order, I'll just click this allocate from catalog option. And you'll see that Noify automates this process now. So rather than me having to jump through hoops and create a purchase order and work around, um, my cost has automatically gone up now based on what I allocated from my catalog. I see my budget has been reached based on what I estimated for these items. And if I ever needed to reference, I see that the status shows me it was via catalog. So I can always pop in here and see um, that these materials were allocated from our catalog. So these are things that we used internally. Uh, the cost is still showing on the job, but at this point, I'm able to keep track of where they did come from. You can always leave any kind of notes here or supporting documents. Uh, if I need to provide more information internally between myself and my other employees. Any kind of catalog allocations, they will automatically uh, total up here in the materials column. That's the most straightforward way to do it. You can also do it from the catalog section though. So if I click back here at the top left, I can navigate to my, uh, my catalog section Depending on the size of your screen, it'll either be all the way at the bottom left here, or you may have to click this more icon and then the catalog. And uh, as many of you know, this is where you'll set up your commonly used products and services and their prices and default scopes of work. 
Uh, but here at the top, I have this allocate materials button. So this is where I can walk through a similar process where I come in here and select my project and job phase. I'll then come in here and select my item and quantity. Update the price if it's going to differ. And once I submit, know if I will point this to the job as the VIA catalog, uh, the allocation to update my material cost on that project. All right, so I think that actually brings us to the, uh, the end of uh, the session of covering uh, each of this list. So we'll go into number five here, which is our Q&A. Uh, and I see we got some questions that have come in through the chat and the Q&A box. So uh, let's we'll start going through them now in order. And if you have any other questions at this point or any other topics that are you know, similar to the materials that you'd like us to uh, go over or provide more information on, uh, please feel free to submit them in the chat or Q&A box now. Okay, so it looks like in the chat, my associate Taryn had come in and uh, answered that the uh, webinars are all recorded. So the webinar today, as well as the webinars coming up this week, and then for all the, the future weeks, they're all going to be recorded and eventually posted on YouTube. So they'll definitely be accessible to you, um, you know, going forward to reference. Okay, so we have a question here about capturing invoices uh, through Receipt Bank to QuickBooks Online and then to Noify. Can I attach an invoice to a PO in Noify this way? Now I have duplicated entries on the job, one for the invoice and one for the PO. They're not matched to each other. Okay, so this is a, uh, a good question here. Uh, one of the options that we have when it comes to expenses is we can pull in your expenses from QuickBooks into Noify. Uh, it requires an extra step, so we'll typically recommend doing it in Noify first because you can job cost it on the spot. You have more control over which phase it's going to, and then we, we can sync it directly to QuickBooks. Um, but you do have the option of pulling in the expenses from QuickBooks, and especially if you're using a third-party app that syncs with QuickBooks like Receipt Bank, uh, it's definitely beneficial. You just have to pretty much tell Noify which job or which phase you want that expense to point to because we'll pretty much just bring them in as an unallocated expense. We store them in one central job costing hub. So you can search and sort through the QuickBooks expenses in Noify and then point them to jobs. Now, as far as your question about uh, having a duplicate, if you're going to create an open purchase order in Noify, the only way to close that purchase order is by logging a bill in Noify. There is no way to create an open purchase order in Noify and close it with a bill from QuickBooks. Uh, essentially, wherever you log the purchase order, whether you build it in QuickBooks or build it in Noify, that's where that uh, bill has to actually be logged. It has to be consistent with the location of the purchase order. Otherwise, you're going to be in that situation where you can't use the invoice from QuickBooks to close the PO in Noify, so you'd essentially have to delete one of them, which kind of defeats the purpose of um, you know, the, the integration in, in itself. So uh, if you're creating the purchase order in Noify, we would recommend logging the bill in Noify. Otherwise, you do have the option to skip that process and just pull in the expense from QuickBooks. Um, and if you're going to do that, we would recommend not entering the purchase order in Noify to avoid that duplicate. Let's see, we have a, another question. Can Noify show you the difference between the budgeted and the actual price? Uh, yes, you'll see that in a number of different locations. Um, you can see here, and let's close this real quick. Uh, you can see here in your plan and track section that um, the left-hand side is your actual cost and the right-hand side is your budgeted cost. Um, so I can see that for the phase as a whole, which includes labor. And then I can also see that just for materials here as well. Um, so this will show me, uh, you know, the actual cost that was budgeted here and the actual cost to date that I've allocated to the projects. And whenever you're looking at the summary and seeing like the, uh, the cost to date, the materials and POs, this is always going to use what your actual cost is. Um, your budget is only used for the planning and for calculating the WIP number. Uh, what's the best way to add tax when the bill is received to a purchase order? Should we just add a tax line? Is there a way to have it calculated automatically against each line item? Uh, for US-based accounts, there isn't a way to include a tax rate per line item for purchases. Um, in these cases, 
It really depends on how you want to keep track of your projects um, and the cost of your projects, whether you want to include tax amount or not. Um, you know, it's, it's your, your cost on your, your expenses, your purchase orders and bills, that's what's going into your profitability. So you, you kind of first off would want to ask yourself, you know, do I want that tax rate to include as part of my, my cost on this project that's going to ultimately affect my profitability? If that's the case, we need to make sure that we're also putting tax on the, the contract and the invoices so that it does balance out. But um, just to answer your question, um, the tax would have to be added as its own line item, whether you do it here um, when you're creating the purchase order. And that tax amount has to be calculated outside of NOFI. Essentially, if you know the percentage based on the area, you know you can subtotal everything on your purchase and then use the percentage um, to figure out the tax amount and then just manually add it here as its own line item. You can do this on the purchase or even if you don't do it on the purchase, if you create a bill against this purchase and then you add it to the bill, um, ultimately the bill is what we're gonna use uh, as far as the cost of the job. So that, that's important to note that the cost of the bill is always going to override whatever the cost of the purchase order is. Uh, so as long as, if you wanna show tax as part of your uh, cost and, and factor into the profitability of the job, then uh, it at least has to get on the bill, if not on the purchase order as well. Um, and yeah, it doesn't automatically calculate against each line item. All right, let's see, we got, can the change orders be sent to client for approval? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, we'll actually be covering this in uh, another uh, webinar in another session, but um, just to kind of briefly uh, answer your question, when you create a change order, just like with our, our contracts and our proposals, um, you'll be able to send out each change order for a digital e-signature. So you can uh, come in here and create your change order, provide the level of detail, any kind of notes that you need, and then you'll be able to uh, send this out for signature. So change orders can be sent out to the client for approval. And like I said, one of our uh, webinar topics is gonna be change orders, so we'll be able to cover this and then some with our change order features then. All right, I'm still going through the, the Q&A list here. Um, have a little bit of time left. I'll try and answer as many questions as we can. Uh, for some reason we don't get to your question today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at noify.com. Uh, that'll reach you know myself, my associates. We got a great support team, and we're happy to provide information. Um, but in the meantime, let's go through and see how many of these we can get done. Uh, question here about the catalog linking to QuickBooks Online. Yes, it does. So the catalog is essentially going to pull from your product and service list in QuickBooks. So your um, full list of non-inventory parts um, products from QuickBooks and your services from QuickBooks we automatically pull that into your catalog and notify when you first connect the accounts. Uh, so that's, it's automatically going to match and mirror each other when you first get started. And then from that point on, any new items that you add to your catalog uh, or to your product service list in QuickBooks, it is part of the two-way sync. So it'll automatically update back and forth. A uh, question about how can I add materials to my catalog? Um, the materials you can add to your catalog. If you have a, a spreadsheet you and you use QuickBooks Online, you can actually upload the spreadsheet and import items into QuickBooks. And like I said, because we're part of the two-way sync, Noify will detect that. And we'll pull in all the new items from your QuickBooks account into Noify into your catalog. Uh, additionally, if you have trouble with that or you're not using QuickBooks, we can actually import a spreadsheet on our side on the back end for you. So if you're interested, I would say just reach out to us at support and we can give you a blank template that we use for importing where if you just fill it out with your products, items, and prices uh, that you want imported, whether you have a list or if you can get a list from one of your vendors, uh, we're happy to help you with that and kind of populate your catalog with your commonly used items. Uh, so there are a number of different ways to, to kind of fill that up. Okay, do we still need to enter a bill if the invoice is synced from QuickBooks? Um, well, the invoice, I'm, I'm assuming you're meaning the vendor invoice because we don't pull in the customer invoices. So if we're pulling in the vendor invoice from QuickBooks for you to job cost, then you do not need to enter a bill in Noify because uh, a bill in Noify and a vendor invoice in QuickBooks, they're essentially the same thing. 
Uh, so I would, I would say you want to choose one or the other. We, we typically recommend entering expenses in Noify for your jobs and syncing them to QuickBooks. But uh, again, it's a feature that you can turn on to pull your expenses from QuickBooks. So if you're using a third party app or ultimately you just feel more comfortable entering them in QuickBooks, um, you can uh, set that up and we'll pull in all of your expenses from QuickBooks into this job costing hub here. Uh, so that this way you'll be able to come in, you can check off the show QuickBooks only box, you can set up a date and search for your vendor. So it lets you search and sort through the QuickBooks expenses. And on the right side here, you'll have the current job where you can actually um, allocate to a specific project or specific job phase here as well. Um, does adding material items to a job phase add those items to QBO? Uh, so that's a good question. When you're building your budget um, or you're, you're setting up a, a purchase, by default, we're gonna start searching through your catalog. And again, the catalog has your, your items from QuickBooks. So um, it, it, it will let you choose from items already set up. Um, but if the item is not already set up, you have two options. One, you can just manually enter a description, especially if it's just an item for uh, one, you know, just one job, you're only gonna use it one time, you don't have to add it. And in that case, it will not sync to QuickBooks. However, when you're starting to add a item to your purchase or to your, um, to your budget, you'll have the option to add new. So this will pop up underneath. And this will let you add an item to your catalog directly. And if you do add it here, it does sync it directly to QuickBooks. Uh, question here, how is an item connected to a vendor? Is it job specific? Where is that connection created? Uh, items from your catalog, they are not vendor or job specific. They're essentially available in a central location here for you. Um, so you can use them across any job along with any vendor. Uh, I think QuickBooks gives you ways of doing that where you can associate it with a default vendor, but it's not restricted that way in Noify. Essentially, all of your items here in Noify in your catalog can be used with any vendor in any purchase in any job. You can tag items though. So if you wanted to create a tag for, for a vendor name or for a particular job type, it'll just help when you're searching and sorting through uh, the catalog. You know, we can actually restrict uh, and narrow down results based on a, a particular tag. Uh, question here, when you allocate costs from the catalog, do inventory quantities values get updated in QuickBooks Online? Uh, also a good question, at this point in time, Noify does not manage inventory. Uh, we don't update the inventory in QuickBooks. So it's very similar to you allocating costs from your inventory. The only thing is we don't update quantity on hand. With that said, we do have a report in Noify where you can set up a date range and we'll pull in all the items that were used in that date range. We have a column for purchases, bills, and also a separate column for uh, catalog allocations. So you can see, uh, you can run an Excel spreadsheet that shows you how many catalog allocations for each item and quantity were used. So it'll make it easier to update, but it doesn't automatically update the quantity on hand at this point in time. Uh, okay, let's see, we got, we got time for a couple more questions here. Uh, it appears that purchase orders in Noify do not transfer to QuickBooks Online. Have I misunderstood this? No, that is correct. An open purchase order. So when you create the purchase order and you choose vendor will invoice, um, that will stay in Noify only until you log a bill. So this open purchase order does not sync to QuickBooks. What we sync to QuickBooks is the expense. So when I create my new purchase here, if I choose the expense that was paid with cash or a card, you know, this is telling Noify it was paid for upfront. So once I submit this here, I don't have to log a bill. It's gonna to sync to QuickBooks directly. It's now an expense. But this open purchase order is just a committed cost until we get that bill. So this PO stays in Noify only until you log the bill in Noify. At that point, once you log the bill, that makes it an expense and that's what syncs to QuickBooks. Uh, if the company uses bill.com for AP or AR tracking, do you have a way to sync the bill.com data directly to Noify? So we don't have a direct integration with bill.com, but this can definitely be done through QuickBooks Online. So what you can do is you can set up uh, our feature in Noify, which lets you create a job and sync it to QuickBooks as a sub customer. 
Um, and then this way, any app like bill.com that you can get the expenses from there into QuickBooks, Noify is able to pull them in. So, uh, you know, a common workflow we've seen used is using bill.com to get the expenses into QuickBooks. And then when you have the expense in QuickBooks and you uh, are able to assign a customer to that expense, in that customer list, you're not gonna have a list of your jobs from Noify because they'll be set up as sub customers. So if you just choose the job in Noify in that customer list in QuickBooks, Noify will automatically pull that expense in from QuickBooks. So essentially the expense goes from bill.com into QuickBooks and then Noify detects it and pulls it in for job costing here. So the, the short answer is we don't integrate directly with bill.com, but there's definitely a, a solid workflow to get your bill.com expenses, job costs to Noify. Uh, why does not Noify attach the uh, transfer the attached document to the transaction and passes the QuickBooks online? Uh, really what we transfer over is the accounting related data. So your numerical values, which of the chart of accounts gets affected and updating the actual numbers. Uh, supporting documents, whether it's cloud storage, you're uploading a picture, a receipt, things like that. It's not part of the sync. It's not part of what gets sent back and forth, whether it's in QuickBooks or in Noify. So we really recommend your point of entry for the expense, wherever you're going to really need to readily pull up that uh, document, um, because that's not part of the sync. It's just going to sync over the actual numbers to update your chart of accounts and update your, your outstanding balances. But um, you know you can download the uh, the receipt. Like let's say, like an employee uploads their receipt as a supporting document to a purchase, and uh, you can download it from Noify and then just upload it into QuickBooks so it's on both sides. But at, at this point, it's not part of the the two way sync, so it doesn't automatically transfer uh, supporting documents. Uh, what does flexible spending mean on the purchase order? So this is uh, flexible spending is how we manage our subcontractor uh, purchase orders. What this is telling Noify is that it's going to likely take more than one bill or, or vendor invoice in order to close the full balance of the purchase order. So um, it's just telling Noify that if we log a bill that's not for this full contract amount, instead of closing the purchase order and you know operating the rest at a loss, just deduct the amount from that bill from this PO so that you know it updates the balance. This way, you know, if I have a $7,500 PO, it's flexible spending. I can log a bill for $5,000, and this way, instead of closing the PO, the PO will stay open with a $2,500 balance. Uh, and this kind of this kind of segues into this next question. Um, if you have a PO entered for materials and we chip away at it over time, can Noify manage this like the subcontractor POs? So yes and no. Um, it, it's not going to work the same where, you know, if you have a material purchase order here, like I have my, um, my list of materials and I actually start changing amounts, like the vendor gives me a different amount and I change that, uh, then it, it will not work the same way. It will actually close, um, it will actually close the the purchase order. Like for example, I have quantities here of these items. Let's just say on the bill, I change acrylic covers from 275 down to um, you know, 150. Instead of leaving a balance of 125, it's just going to close this purchase order and use whatever was on the bill. So in, in that regard, it does not work the same as the subcontractor POs. The way that you can slowly chip down away at this is by adjusting the quantity. So if I uh, create a bill for this purchase order and I log that, you know, we're only putting 15 out of the 25 on the bill, then the PO will stay open. And the next time I create a bill, it'll bring in the remaining 10. So um, the short answer is when it comes to material purchases, um, you can slowly chip away at it using the quantity. Whereas the flexible spending purchase orders for your subcontractors, you can chip away at it by changing the amounts. Uh, flexible spending at this point in time, it's set up automatically when you create a subcontractor purchase order. And then had a question about Intuit uh, giving us the ability to sync to QuickBooks projects. Um, I, I can't make any promises one way or the other. I, you know, it's relatively new. Um, so it's not part of our, our API integration yet. 
but um, you know, it's possible that we'll be able to do something in the future. Really what I would recommend is, you know, Noify is built to manage your projects and keep track of your job data. Um, and QuickBooks still excels at keeping track of your accounting. So using Noify for everything job related and QuickBooks for your accounting related is still going to be the best fit on both ends and the best way to get the most out of both platforms. Uh, I apologize if I didn't get to everyone's questions. Um, and uh, I appreciate Taryn jumping into the chat and, and helping out as well. Just trying to give information. We really appreciate you guys' interest joining us today and um, coming with a lot of good questions. And uh, we hope that you'll join us for the rest of this week and for the rest of our webinar series. We, we have 11 more topics and, uh, you know, including the next one tomorrow, same time. So um, if you're interested and you're available, we'd love to see you back here again. And if you have questions that did not get answered today, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to support at noify.com. And we're always happy to set up trainings and provide more information. Uh, but that'll uh, go ahead and conclude our webinar on material cost today. So I want to thank everybody again for taking out the time. And we look forward to seeing you for the rest of our uh, webinar series. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.